number 48. A simple compass can be made by placing a small bar magnet on a cork floating in water. Letter A. What fraction of a plain cork will be submerged when floating in water? All right, so for letter A, um, we're going to use the concepts discussed in number 36 of this chapter. Uh, please reference that problem. Okay, it's very important that you understand the formula that I'm going to use here, where it comes from. All right, because if the problem changes and you just memorize the formula on the test, you're going to be, um, how do they say that? Nailed? No. Tacked? No. Yes, I think you know. So uh, what we're going to do here is we are going to uh, f use this formula. All right, so here we have the fraction submerged. Um, that's going to equal now the density of the object in which it in which it's floating which is floating right the density of the object divided by then the density of the fluid in which that object is in so in terms of my picture over here right we have the cork in um, yellow we have the in part in blue is going to be the water so to find the fraction submerged which is what they're asking it says what fraction will be submerged of the cork okay so we simply uh, tailoring this formula specifically for this problem. The fraction submerged is simply going to be the density of the cork divided by the density of the uh, water. So we know the values, right? I mean, these come right from the table. So fraction submerged is simply uh, getting a little, getting a little excited. My handwriting is getting a little, a little messy. So let's try this again. Fraction submerged, submerged will equal the, the density of the cork, which is 0 0.24, divided by the density of the water, which is 1.00. Notice, it doesn't matter if I use gram per milliliter, as long as they're consistent. It also wouldn't matter if you use kilogram per cubic meter, as long as they're both the same, okay? Your answer is gonna come out the same. So the fraction submerged, because it's simply just a fraction, so the answer is unit less, right? There is no unit. So the fraction here is gonna be 0.24. And this would be the answer if they want the fraction. If they want the percent, all you got to do is multiply it by 100. So this would be equivalent to 24%. So that takes care of letter A. All right. Uh, letter, uh, let's move on to letter B now. So it says, if the cork has a mass of 10 grams and a 20 gram magnet is placed on it, what fraction of the cork will be submerged now? All right. So this one's a little harder to kind of think about. All right. Uh, so down here, we have... Uh, a, P, a, a magnet, okay? And uh, magnets are general. I mean, they could be made out of a couple of metals, but it needs to be a, a magnetic type of metal. And iron suits the bill. So the density of iron is 7.8 grams per milliliter. Now, if we place this thing, this iron bar, this iron magnet on top of the cork here, what's going to happen to the cork iron system? Well, it should, in theory, sink down, right? It should sink down. But the question is, how much does it sink down? Does it sink all the way? You know, does it sink just a little bit? Okay, how much actually sinks? Right? And if you notice here, as this is sinking, does it matter what the density of the iron technically is? No, right? It actually, it, it doesn't matter what that density is. I mean, we might, we might need it to find out some piece of information. But what's important is that it's the cork that is being submerged first, okay? So that's really an important finding. Basically what's happening is the density of the cork is changing, okay? Uh, so, let's, uh, so, so let's consider, okay? In order to find the fraction submerged, remember we have to know the density of the object we're dealing with and divide it by the density of the fluid. So the fluid's density hasn't changed, so that's not the issue. The issue is what is the density of the object? Should we just use the plain old cork? Do we have to now somehow take this extra mass into account? Yes, so we, we do, we, gotta, we have to take both into account. So in other words, the density now of the cork should be equal to, and this is simple, right? This is just coming right from this formula. It's equal to the mass of the cork divided by the volume of the cork, okay? Now it told us that we're dealing with a 10 gram piece of cork. So uh, what I'll do, and what I want to do first, is find the volume of this thing without the magnet on it. Okay, I just want to find the volume of the of the cork. So by to do that, I need to know the density, which I do know, right? That's 0.24, and uh, the mass of the cork they told me was 10 grams. Right? Notice my units are consistent here. This is in terms of gram. This is also in terms of gram, 
and then divided by the volume. So simply cross multiply. So the volume of the cork is going to be 10 over 0 0.24, right? Which works out to be exactly 10, uh, 10 divided by 0.24. Works out to be about 41.7 or so. 41.7, okay? And in terms of milliliters, that's the volume of the cork. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, let me color code this. Let me bring that on over, resize this a little bit, and I'm going to leave it right here, okay? This is the volume of the cork now, of this part, oops, of that part in yellow, okay? Now, the volume of the cork is not going to change at all, right? As this system begins to submerge, the volume of the cork hasn't changed, but the apparent weight of the cork has. It's very important to think about what exactly is being submerged. Exactly. Well, right now, just the cork is submerged. So I don't care what the volume is of this thing. It doesn't have anything to do with it. Right? It's the cork that is being submerged. So what I care about is the specific density or the, the density of the cork. The only thing, though, is that the cork's volume is still the same. Right? And its apparent weight has changed, though. So that's why I had to find the volume first. All right? So we found the volume of the cork. Now... Let's go back to this, okay? Now, so that's the volume of the cork without the magnet on it, basically, right? And that will also be the volume of the cork with the magnet on it. The volume of the cork hasn't changed. But now, the apparent density, I'm going to call this the apparent density. The apparent density of the cork has changed. The apparent density of the cork has changed. Because now it's going to be the total mass, the mass of the cork, and the mass of the magnet on top, right? That's essentially, that, that's the quote-unquote mass that the water will be feeling more or less, right? Because that, this is, it's the cork that is articulating with the water. That will then be divided by the volume of the cork. And that's just what we found just before, the 41.7, all right? So now what I can do is I can now take this, so the, vo the density, the apparent density of the cork, will be equal to the total mass, right, which is the mass then of the cork plus the mass of the magnet, all divided by the velocity, uh, the velocity, the volume of the cork. Uh, so the apparent density of the cork will simply be, all we got to do is plug in the mass. They told us was 10 uh, grams of the cork. The magnet is going to be 20. And then divide that by the volume of that cork. So there's going to be 41.7. And we will have a value now in gram per milliliter. So it's 10 plus 20 divided by 41.7. Or actually 41.6666. I'm going to use that exact value. So notice this works out to be 0 0.72, almost exactly, right? Actually, it probably is exact if I continue it all out. So 0 0.72 um, grams, grams per milliliter. Okay, now, this is now the new density of that cork, right? That's what the water will feel the density of the cork to be. So now when I do my calculation, which I, since I'm running out of space, I'm going to erase this and just bring it on up. If you want to see the work again, copy it down or rewind the video. So now, now I can finally use my fraction submerged formula. So basically now it just works out that the, Fraction submerged will equal then the uh, density, right, of the cork, basically the apparent density of that cork, divided by the density of the water, okay? So the fraction submerged now is simply going to be 0 0.72 all over 1, right? And again, why 1? Because that's the density of the water. So this just works out to be, I mean... Right, anything over one is itself, so 0 0.72, that's the fractional answer. If you need the percent, obviously just multiply it by 100, and that's 72%. So that takes care of uh, letter B, all right? And what I realized, let's, why don't we make this red? Why don't we make it a happy little red? All right. So that takes care of letter B. Why don't we now look at letter C? Will the bar, magnet, and cork float in ethyl alcohol? So this is just a simple uh, comparison test, all right? Uh, remember, less dense objects float, more dense objects sink. 
In other words, uh, we're asking, will it float? So we can come up with this. If the density, if the density, the apparent density, because it's asking about the magnet cork system, if the apparent density of the cork is less than the density of ethyl alcohol or ethanol, then it will float. If it's greater, then it will sink. Okay, but this is the floating condition. Okay, so what's the number for the apparent density of the cork? Well, we found that already. That was 0 0.72. And then, is that less than 0 point, I think it's 79 or somewhere around there, right? This is the density of ethyl alcohol. And yes, it is, right? Yes, it is less dense, and therefore it will float. Okay, not flowed, float. So hope this video helped, guys. All right. Uh, please give us a hand. Subscribe. Tell your friends. That'd be awesome. And we'll see you in the next video. All right. We appreciate you guys very much. Take care.